Do you have anything, Pigeon? <laughs> Ideas aren't gonna get us anywhere, Pigeon. It's been two weeks since we had to move into my rental pocket dimension, and all we have are ideas. Mm -hmm. I guess you're right. He's got more combat experience than me. Plus, he actually knows how to use his powers. With the limited supplies we have in here, it wouldn't make much of a difference. I would review something, but all I've got down here is my Nintendo DS and a copy of Lego Batman. Oh yeah. Hello my friends! Lego Batman is kinda precious to me. Seriously, the only two non bionicle mocks I actively display are Batman ones. And I honestly like the Lego theme more than Batman himself. I don't know, something about the designs in the original 2006 and 2008 theme just really captures my interest. Maybe it's because Batman's stuff just translates so well into brick form. Maybe it's because the minifigures just look so stylish. Either way, I love this theme. And the video game definitely contributed to it. And I think that love spread throughout the brick filming community back in the day. Seriously, even with how vulgar those could get, there was still a strong hint of what the game established. Heck, I think the mockery of Robin in this game influenced that trope in Brick Films. And yes, I know Forest Fire 101 popularized the trend, but I think this game influenced him in that direction. Anyway, you may think that I'm talking about the standard console release, but to be honest, I feel the style of the DS version more. Because the DS does a lot more right over the console version. Let's dig into it and I'll explain. Right from the first time you load a file, the biggest difference is apparent. The Batcave is much more contained. This might just be me, but I feel that the LEGO levels in the console versions tend to sprawl a bit too much. And that was especially apparent in the Batcave. Like, do I really need to use an elevator to get to the vehicles from the computer, and then search on a computer screen to access the level of my choice? The DS version simplifies it to just walking up a ramp and going to a room of levels. Simple, and effective. This also seems to have a lot more lighting than the other Batcave, while still maintaining a nicely dark atmosphere, which is true of most levels in this thing. Atmosphere is a big thing this game has, better fitting the Burton movie music in my opinion. Just sad that the emulation used for this footage can handle that music, so the crack on the sound effects is rather... obvious. <laughs> Anyway, gameplay. Well, for the most part, you walk around as Batman and Robin, in the hero mode, and work towards defeating the villains through the use of various suits, levers, buttons, and destructible objects. Some of that is pretty obvious LEGO gameplay, since who has really not played one of these? Well, okay, who watching this video hasn't played at least one of these? A neat thing I have to note about controls is the minimal touchscreen usage and utter lack of L and R button use. It may seem odd to note that as a plus, but when you're focusing mainly on buttons and the L and R buttons tend to break on these things, it's nice. Levels are also pretty easy to figure out, being nicely contained but never boring. The vast amount of traversal methods help keep you interested. You can grapple, you can swing, you can glide, you can flip, you can go through a chute, you can go through a wall in more ways than one, and most importantly, you can kill plant life! Also, game designers, could we maybe not make Batman climb a ladder? I mean, I get all into being Batman in this thing, and then I have to climb a stupid ladder. Da, 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 da. Make Robin do that crap, not Batman. Now this. This is how a boss travels. Combat is pretty basic in this game. Just hit Y until the dude dies. That's it. It's not boring or anything, but I gotta say it how it is. Also, I didn't notice this until last year, but your partner can't kill any of the enemies. Seriously, watch this. DAI also occasionally gets stuck on nothing in particular every now and again, thus making it so you have to come back and get them all the time. It also happens in the console versions though, so I'll let it pass. A neat thing that Batman and Robin have in this game is alternate costumes with various abilities. For Batman, we have the glide suit, which is basically what it says on the tin, bomb suit, ditto, and one more suit that we'll note in a minute. 
Robin has a magnet suit, and it's honestly better in design than his console counterpart, simply due to the feet. Now, hear me out on this. Look at these giant plates on his feet. Now, convert it to human scale, taking into account that you can't accidentally step on one of them with your other foot, lest you trip. Wanna know how you be walking? Here's a rough idea for you. Yeah, I'll take practicality any day. Anyway, the magnet suit can walk up certain walls, which is a decent use. He also has a toxin suit, which can walk over toxic waste and stuff, but also does... this. Is that you breathing? Because I, I can't hear my third thing. To be fair, Batman also has a suit that does that for extreme cold, so they're equal in that regard. A neat aspect about these suits is that a lot of them can be built with your own bricks if you have the right parts. Just a shame that you can't use these parts in the character creator, and that you're oftentimes just in the bomb and magnet suits. Okay, I think we have gameplay down for the most part. Overall, the main advantage to it has been more compact level design and better lighting. But I feel that the whole atmosphere aspect really shines in the cutscenes. Okay, for anybody who needs a quick history lesson, back in the day, LEGO games didn't have much voice acting. Just grunting and whatnot. Most of the time, this was fine, since a lot of LEGO games were based off of movies that you could reference to know what's going on. LEGO Batman was the first time they ever tried for an original story. And boy does it show. A lot of the exaggerated humor is just not as funny, since there's not much of a basis for a joke. All you have for reference is the cutscenes before you, and that means that the jokes won't always make a lot of sense. Like, look at this. Robin, the heck was that? There are also some jokes that go more over the top than they should, or are just limited by the graphics. The cutscenes in the DS version are much better though, since they're more like comic panels than the fully animated stuff. This means that they aren't limited by what the graphics can handle, so stuff like Mr. Freeze's tank burst scene is a lot clearer. They also toned down some of the more over the top jokes, like simplifying Poison Ivy's love potion to a simple knockout. And instead of doing whatever the heck this is at the frozen police officers, Robin just laughs at them, which is a lot less confusing. A small note on style is how much more physical the world feels in the DS cutscenes. Instead of holograms to explain his plans, the Riddler uses a physical model. It's just a much better aesthetic. Another thing the comic panel style adds? Awesome Batman moments. I mean, seriously, look at this. I want a big version I can frame. And what about this one? It's so dramatic. You can practically hear the dun 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 dun. These comic panel cutscenes just tell the story a lot better through a purely visual medium, and I think they deserve credit for that. Oh yeah, and the stories are mostly the same from the console version. The Riddler wants to rob a bank, Penguin wants to take over the world with penguin robots, and Joker wants to douse the city with laughing gas. Oh yeah, and they keep on giving Robin his own different vehicles in these cutscenes. Like, really Bruce? You have to give the kid his own jet? You really couldn't just put another seat in the Batwing? Maybe it's something for the multiplayer mode, I don't know. Anyway, the story gives us a feature somewhat unique to this game. The dual story modes. Yes, you can stop the villains as Batman and Robin, but you can also play as the villains as they execute their evil plans. This leads to some unique abilities for traversing levels that are quite similar to what you played before, but not quite the same. You can access the villain levels by going into a secret passageway from the Batcave and emerging into Arkham Asylum. And Batman has such a well-marked door because Arkham is so well known for containing their inmates. As demonstrated by them all walking around freely. Wait, why is Gordon here? Oh no. Did the killing joke work in this universe? Oh wait, Barbara is up and walking. Okay, we're fine. But not for long! Alright, some final notes before we go. Rather than interrupt the gameplay before levels with villain bios, they have you collect Joker cards, with bios for heroes and villains alike thus expanding your knowledge of the Batman universe even further. Yet, none for an obscure character like Azrael, for some reason. Huh. There are also Riddler clues for minikits, which allow you to make Lego models as per usual, and red bricks for cheats. The character creator allows you to make minifigures out of the characters you've bought, with my usual custom being Superman because I was that kid. 
Oh, heck, I'm still that kid. Oh yeah, and don't use Clayface's headpiece with Batman's moves, people. Speaking of characters, we have a few that are exclusive to this version. Though why exactly, I'm not sure. Finally, we note the item shop. This is where you spend all those well-earned studs you got over the levels. You can buy characters that you unlocked, buy hints that are more just common sense than anything, and buy cheats to help you in the game. Or the keys to open up all the areas in the game, that's useful. It only becomes a problem when you run out of stuff to buy in the shop, but still have this overwhelming urge to collect studs. Guys, help, I'm too rich! Overall, while LEGO Batman on console is a good game on its own, the lack of limitations and experimental ideas just left enough room for the DS version to refine it. Though even that was ultimately refined in the console version of 2. Ah, oh, crap guys, I gotta go. Um, The Killing Joke is overrated, LEGO minifigure printing peaked in 2012, and the 3DS ports of LEGO games aren't as good as the DS ones. Especially LEGO Batman 3. Alright, what do we got? Bento Fire, Bento Fire, this is your alternate universe counterpart. Are you reading me? Alternate to a fire? Ben, I finally reached you. Another version of us is coming for you. You must prepare. Yeah, a bit late on that one, dude. He's already defeated me. Oh. This is bad. Oh, you think? Don't worry, Ben. I'm coming over there. Just give me a second to pinpoint your location and... There. Oh, hello.